What's happening, guys? Like you still back today with another video today. I got my good friend Dago Knight back with me. Say, hey, everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? So today I'm doing a part three to the Akatsuki Gauntlet series trilogy kind of thing I've been doing the past few weeks. Uh, first one was My Guy versus the Akatsuki. Second one was Kakashi versus the Akatsuki. So today, to kind of switch things up for the trilogy, we're doing Kakashi and Guy versus each Akatsuki duo in Naruto. So. I thought this would be a perfect, you know, trilogy ender, um, and who better to have with me than my good friend Daigo. So today, as you can see, we're just going to go through the Akatsuki pairs uh, in the organization and to see how the the eternal rivals fare against against each member or each duo of the Akatsuki. So as you can tell in the thumbnail, if y'all, you know, if it isn't, you know, uh, obvious, we're going to be talking about Warark Kakashi and Warark Guy. But we are going to be excluding DMS Kakashi and Eighth Gate Guy specifically, just to make it For fair. Obvious reason. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I mean, we might as well just wrap this up within like ten more seconds if we did DMS and Eighth Gate, uh, Eighth Gate guys. So, um, so yeah. So single Shining on War Kakashi versus, uh, uh, you know, and then my guy with the uh, sixth seventh gate versus each Kakashi duo. So, um. Daigo, you got anything before we start? No, I guess. That's it. All right. So the first duo we're going to go to is Hidon and Kakasu. And to be frank, uh, you know, I, I, Akakasu is my favorite Akatsuki member, guys. But this duo is not last oh, really? too long. Is there a favorite yeah. Akatsuki member? Yeah. He's, kinda, he's got that kind of cool factor going on. But, uh -huh. uh, you know, when it comes to cool stoic characters, yeah, he's, he's, my, he's my favorite as far as Akatsuki goes. Um but yeah this this one's not lasting too long i gotta be honest with no <laughs> um hidana and cox don't really have anything to do against kakashi or guy especially i mean maybe you could argue cox who has the diamond skin but kakashi has a literal way to completely counter that that we saw in the story which is raikiri and i don't even think he would withstand a barrage of six gate punches from guy no it's i mean and, and he done is a, a non NC in this fight. Like he, he can do anything. Like literally anything, nothing at all. I I wouldn't even think that guy even needs any of the gates to you know get rid of he done. I mean. I mean, um, Kakashi doesn't even need his sharing gun. I would even say like uh, he yeah. not gonna do anything to them. Kakusu uh, is gonna be pretty easy to deal with. To Naruto who was able to do so in the beginning mid Shippuden. So like. Um, War Kakashi and Guy, like they're not gonna have any trouble. I would even say that either Kakashi or Guy by themselves would win this fight without difficulty. So if you put them both together, like there's no chance. I was gonna say because like both of them, I mean, like you said, uh, uh, separately, they have good reaction time and speed feats. You know, um, like Kakashi more so reaction time feats and Guy more speed feats. So one way or the other, like they're not really gonna keep up with Kakashi and Guy, like, both specifically, uh, you know, at the same time. So, I mean, we and we saw that the hearts are completely susceptible to being taken off guard and fooled and even, you know, killed. So, yeah, uh, with Guy just running circles around Kakazu and Hidon, and then you have Kakashi just setting up Kamui's at the if, at the very worst if he needs to sets up Kamui's. But I would argue he mm -hmm. doesn't even need Kamui for this fight. So. Yeah, the, the Immortal duo is not lasting long against the Eternal Rivals duo. So, <laughs> um, so now we'll move on to Sasori and Daedara. Uh, now, initially, I, you can ask Daigo, like, I did kind of give this one a little bit to the artist duo just because I always try to, like, to not downplay Sasori because I think he's he's a threatening uh, ninja, which he is. He's definitely threatening to most people in the verse, but I don't know. I, I Like... The, the hundred puppets aren't doing anything for start. Like even because the, the Huruko shell, we can just get past the Huruko shell. Huruko shell is going to get taken off guard. Like, like, yeah. Right the like, uh, Sakura was able to one shot that, and I'm not saying Sakura's weak or anything in the beginning of Naruto Shippuden, but I'm pretty sure base guy is pretty much around her strength level. Um, mm -hmm. he, she was able to destroy that big rock in the entrance of the Akatsuki cave, but guy would be able to do the same thing in base. I don't think he would have much of a problem. And what always gets me with Sasori is that his puppets are just kind of paper, man. Every time Sakura lands a blow on any of them, they are destroyed completely. 
She yeah. even destroyed the third Kazekagi, which is supposed to be the strongest puppet ever created with a single punch. So, like, Guy is going to be way stronger than Sakura was in the beginning of Shippuden, and he's going to be way, way faster than she is. Like, he's not going to have any problems dealing with all those puppets, and he also has Kakashi. So, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. and like, they're not, they're, like, Kakashi and Guy specifically were fighting large groups of enemies in the war arc, so I'm pretty sure they're used to fighting, like, in that kind of environment anyway. So, yeah, like, and, yeah, like, you could maybe make a case that while they're fighting the puppets, you know, Sastry could try to release a cloud of poison, but that also puts Data at risk. So, and likewise... And also, with, with this fight, there's a problem that usually Data is a very threatening opponent because his arsenal is so dangerous, especially C4. But Kakashi has ways to counter it, just like Sasuke had in their fight. So he can use lightning style to, in the worst case scenario, if Sasuke uses his C4, uh, Sasuke, sorry, um, Data, if Data uses his C4 and tries to essentially explode them from within, Kakashi can use a lightning style, not a Raikiri to like pierce himself, but infuse lightning into himself and Guy to defuse the nano explosives so mm -hmm. that, you know, they don't die. And he could literally do the same thing Sasuke did in their fight because he can see the nano explosives coming with his Sharingan and then he can counter the explosives with the lightning styles. And Kakashi is even smarter than Sasuke is, so I don't think uh, this would be much of an issue. Yeah. So, like, and like, like I was saying earlier, like the with the poison, you know, like Sasha can't really release a, a huge cloud of poison without putting data at risk. Likewise, for the C3 and some of other like D Data's other kind of uh, explosives, because yeah, you know, the big he, he, C2 he, dragon explosives are really large. Like, if he throws one of them in the battlefield, and if the 100 puppets are like trying to deal damage against Kakashi and Guy, he's gonna take out way more puppets than he's gonna do harm to Kakashi and Guy. Exactly, so it just kind of red or mute to even use those. So, like, uh, me and Daigo kind of agree that, you know, maybe it might get down to a rage quit C0 for Datara to try to, like, <laughs> end the fight. But even that, like, even that, like, Kakashi has a way of, like, if he's quick enough to perceive what's going on before, like, it goes on. Like, he could, like, maybe calm away the exploding face, like, before it actually, you know, goes off. Um, if not, if Kakashi doesn't perceive what's going on, then it's a draw, I suppose, for everybody. Yeah, um, but uh, I think the possibility of a draw is kind of low. <laughs> I'm about to say, I don't even think it gets that far. Like, I don't think it gets anywhere near that far. I'm not trying to sleep wait, on wait, Data. Let's be honest here for a second. Imagine Sasori pulls the 100 puppet army, all those puppets, the entire you know army that took over a country. Guy whips out the seventh gate. One Hirodora is going to destroy the entire army and Sasori I'm together. Saying. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying, like, honestly, yeah. Um, and then that just leaves... I mean, I, I, you probably could include Sasori in that too. Let's be honest; like, you probably could include Sasori yeah. in that in yeah, that absolutely. shot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then that would just leave Datara. <laughs> and as we just said, like, yeah, it, it's Kakashi and Datara is going to be the exact same as Sasuke versus Datara, but with a better win rate for Kakashi. So, yeah, the artist the artist duo aren't lasting too much longer than the uh, immoral duo. If I'm going to be well, I guess they last a little longer, but you know. Not oh much yeah, they, they definitely give them a, a tougher fight, but still, it, not close to win. Yeah. So next up, we have everyone's arguable favorite Akatsuki duo, Itachi and Kisame. Now, initially, I was going to do this with a the, the sick Itachi we saw that fought Sasuke, but in all fairness, I'm going to use a healthy Itachi, a hypothetical healthy Itachi and Kisame. Um, but to be honest with you, though, I don't know if it... Now, I, again, I guess this is going to be a hot take because everyone loves Itachi and Kisame, but... I mean, it, it takes no time for Guy to enter the sixth or seventh gate, and let's say if he wa if he knows who he's well, I say if Guy knows who he's fighting, but Guy can't remember faces to save his life. So I mean, but he can't remember Itachi. Like uh, when he arrived in the first time Itachi was introduced, he was like, "Oh, that's Itachi Uchiha right out of the gate." So he knows who True. Itachi is. He doesn't know who Kisame is. So like, he'd be like, "Oh, who's that blue guy?" Well, Itachi, you know who he is. And if Guy is with Kakashi, there, Kakashi would tell Guy to like take this fight very seriously. Obviously, yeah. So, uh, 
as we saw in the work, guy was going straight to the seventh gate, or not the seventh gate sometimes, but sixth gate at least, uh, mm -hmm. right out of the gate to fight against the tail beasts. And when he arrived to save Naruto, when B and Naruto were fighting against the Jinchuri and Obito, he was already using the gate. So it's not as though he's going to try do stuff in base first. And then we can also see that he lasts a long time in his gates. Mm -hmm. um, in the war, he has a lot of stamina. It's kind of insane. Yeah, and so even if you guys don't want to say that he would use like the seventh gate and thereby by extension use Hirodora off rip, like I don't think personally, uh, well, because for one thing, Kisame like like we said in like the, the data and sorcery section, like Kisame can't use his trump card in this fight without putting Itachi at risk because his trump card is pretty much the the giant lake, and he can't yeah, the do bubble? that. You mean like yeah. the the massive bubble? Yeah. Yeah, the bubble. Yeah. Like, he can't use that without putting Itachi at risk, and Itachi's definitely not going to be able to use Susano underwater, much less fight by himself I mean, underwater. I guess he can, but, like, he's not going to be very MOBA. <laughs> yeah, he, they'd probably just sink right down to the bottom, so... Um, so, yeah, so, like, on like due to that, like, it's just going to be 6-gate. If you give, you know, Kisame some benefit of the doubt, it's going to be 6-gate guy versus Kisame, and to be honest, I don't... I don't know if uh, you know Kisame can last uh, too long against a, a full power like six gate guy. Uh, I mean, just... we saw in their fight that he was actually doing pretty well against six gate guy. Uh, right next to the Turtle Island, he was unleashing all of that barrage of sharks, and six gate guy was using his um, six gate like punches with a fire. Mm -hmm. But he also has Kakashi to back him up, and I guess Kisame will have Itachi. But we see that like Hirodora is the perfect counter for Kisame in every single way because when he shot the great shark bomb to try and absorb it, it was not ninjutsu, it was a physical manifestation of my guy's strength, which mm -hmm. completely negated Kisame's ability, so he got destroyed by it. And I mean the problem with the Hirodora for Itachi Kisame is that it has a really long blast radius. Mm -hmm. If he used it on Kisame, Itachi can get caught in it too. Yeah, and I say at best, like Itachi survives, but you know, with some, at the very least, some minimal damage, which would leave him vulnerable to both Kakashi and Guy. Assuming that Kakashi hasn't even gotten involved at this point, you know, and even if he hasn't, Kakashi can be sta like standing back, thinking of like, because Kakashi is very observant. Like at any moment, he could be like thinking like, okay, what's a good opening for me? Like I'm gonna look for an opening, and as soon as I see one, I'm taking it. Like, Akashi is that meticulous, so I feel as though, like, if Guy is, if we do give that, like, to to a guy and say he does, you know, start using the 7th gate, you know, and just Hero Dora's them, and saying that Itachi survives, but Kisame gets, you know, one-shotted, um, then it's just gonna be Itachi versus Guy, and even if it was healthy Itachi versus Guy, as strong as a healthy Itachi would be, I don't know if he'd be able to handle both War Akashi and War Art Guy. Um, mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I told this to Daigo earlier. It's like, I, Guy could like go and still be in the 6th or 7th gate and just run circles around the Susano, like, trying to damage as much as he can. And while you have Kakashi setting up Kamui's to, you know, warp away a, a part of the Susano, a couple, uh, like, one or two holes within the Susano. And leave an opening for a guy to come in and either Hirodora again or just straight yeah, up I mean, blitz. Yeah, and we saw how Hirodora was damaging a Susano because guy literally used it against Madara Susano. Mm -hmm. And sure, Itachi has the auto mirror, but guy can just kind of run a circle around it and shoot it from behind if the the, the shield's the problem. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I would argue that uh, not counting Naruto, Minato and Sage of Six Paths characters, Seventh Gate Guy is the fastest guy in the verse. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and eight, yeah. Eighth Gate Guy is the is the fastest guy in the verse, but Seventh Gate Guy is like probably the seventh fastest guy in the verse. So uh, yeah, it would be and very difficult to deal with him. Yeah, and I've seen some like really like high takes on Itachi's durability, like even the healthy Itachi's durability, but. I gotta be honest with you, like, I'm not saying he completely gets one-shotted from a blitz from Guy, not not counting the Hero Dora, but, like, if it was just a regular blitz from, you know, a punch or two from Guy, like, I'm not saying Itachi straight up dies, but 6th to 7th gate Guy, in my opinion, starts reaching into the, like, levels of Tsunade and the Raikage's level of strength, or relative to that, 
So a few hits from those punches from Guy, uh, I don't know. It's gonna be enough to get the job done. And at yeah. worst case, at worst case, you have like uh, Kakashi using the right carry as a battle ender as a, as and a, a Kamui too he has several things to do uh you can even argue that the raikiri not the raikiri but the Kamui can probably bypass the outer mirror completely just like it bypassed through seeking orbs in the work so even if um itachi raises the outer mirror to block uh, a punch from guy for instance kakashi can use Kamui in it and then guy has an opening to just punch itachi from within the susano just like he punched uh, uh, jubidara but then in the eighth gate it would kind of be a comparable uh, comparable like situation in the fight yeah so it's really tough um yeah. i don't think itachi and kisame win this fight maybe I saying, if somehow through... itachi pulls up some like completely op strategy with genjutsu puts kakashi and itachi uh, and, and guy under tsukiyomi or something like that but other than that, uh, difficult to see them winning. And I'm, I, I can totally get that. I can totally give that to Itachi and Kisami because, like again, like you said, Itachi is a master tactician. So it's like, it's definitely possible. But it's like one of those things, like where if both Kakashi and Guy are aware of Sukiyomi and how it works and no counters to avoid it. Not saying it's a hundred percent guaranteed that they can avoid it. But considering who these two are and like how they are pretty confident in how they can avoid. Tsukiyomi, uh, I don't think Genjutsu in general is going to be enough to, you know, get the, or is not what's going to get the kill on uh, th th this duo. So Amaterasu also isn't going to work. I mean, reputation aside, I think Amaterasu can just be dodged by Guy or reacted to by Kakashi with the sharding gone. So yeah, um, I agree. I think Kakashi and Guy also take this, but. The ratio is tipped a little bit, you know, back and forth. I think that if oh yeah, if we give this one to the Kakashi and guy, I'd say they take it about I'd say six to seven out of ten. I still I think Kakashi and Itachi still give them a fight, all things considered. Yeah, I'd say I'd say seven out of ten is really a fair estimation. Maybe a little more than that. Yeah, just because Kakashi and guy are so OP, but then if you if, we don't know exactly how powerful a serious healthy Itachi would be, so I guess you could give him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, now we're going to go on to Pain and Conan. Um, and look, no shade on Conan, but I mean, other than the fact that she can fly and be a little bit of a Hendrix, she's not like going to be able to do much. Like, yeah. And again, that's, 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 Unless if you say uh, she prepared a, a paper from Ocean beforehand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I mean, could be a you, problem for Itachi, yeah, for Kakashi it, and Guy, but. <laughs> yeah. If you do give her prep time, then they're screwed. They ain't nothing, there's nothing. Well, I guess. No, uh, I don't know if Guy in the 70 k could start like hopping on air like he was I don't during the 8th gate. So. I think that has to be 8th gate, but yeah, uh, or unless you make unless you can maybe we can give Kakashi that he can warp himself into Kamui, but um, he never know. does that though, so I don't think he would be able to. Only, like only late, Madara was able to do that with Kakashi's eye because Madara is based. That was one of those things that maybe he learned it like as the war was going on. So like if we gave that to him, like it might be a possibility. But if if, if we give Conan prep time, that would be the only way that I could remotely see them surviving that. Um, and that's 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 an iffy case too. But if we don't give her prep time, then yeah, I I can't see Conan really being much of a factor. And as a matter of fact, I. would if Kakashi really wanted to, off rip Kamui's GG. I hate, like, I know everyone hates the Kamui GG, but, like, it is. They're fighting Akatsuki members, and if it's, like, a hypothetical, like, you know, start fresh fight, then, yeah, I don't see why Kakashi wouldn't try to end the fight as quickly as he could. And what's the quickest way to end the fight besides Kamui? So, um. Yeah, I mean, and I guess you could say Pain would be a, an issue for Kakashi because he would want to save his chakra for Pain on Conan. Mm -hmm. um, but Takashi and Guy would know ta tactics to deal with the Renegon and its abilities because they saw how Pain fought um, in the evasion of Leaf Village. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the Pain bodies, I'm not saying they are less durable than Sasori's puppets, but they're not extremely durable. Yeah. Uh, Sage Mode Naruto was one shotting them kind of casually. And I would say that, you know, a sixth gate guy probably has more physical strength. Then Sage Bell Naruto. Um, They're very comparable right, at the very least, for sure. Yeah. Alright, Kiri would also be more than enough to 
one shots any path of pain and kakashi and guy here are going to be way faster than any path really mm -hmm. um the only one i can see you argue is a fast path that could maybe keep up with him is going to be the diva path and he was having a very hard time keeping up with taijutsu against sage mo naruto yeah um and because Kakashi and Guy are going to be, you know, together here, the advantage that Pain usually has, which is numbers advantage, is going to be diminished a little bit because, oh, he's fighting against two guys. And I mean, I guess Conan is on his side too, but like, she's not going to be very useful. Also, the Prada path, which can be problematic, um, is not going to do so hot here because Guy, <laughs> he's going to completely negate anything the Prada path can do because he doesn't have ninjutsu. And I don't think the Prada path can absorb Kamui. Like, how nope. would you... Absorb Kamui. Kamui kind of counters everything in the verse, so like, uh, the Predator Path's not gonna be an issue like it usually is. Yeah, and like, I guess the, what you could say though is like, and again, this is kind of a stretch because again, like you said, they know Pain's abilities, so they are confident enough they can counter them, but like, maybe if you can argue that the Animal Path can get one or two summons on the field, but like right out, like off rip, then mm -hmm. maybe like they have more of a chance. Um, but yeah, because the king's are problematic, but yeah, yeah. Still. But like, if we give that the if like, so if we give them that, then yes, I, I honestly feel like Pain and Conan actually might overwhelm Kakashi, depending on which summons they choose to bring out, uh, I suppose. But if Kakashi and Guy know which Pain like summons the animal summons, then I honestly feel like Kakashi would use Kamui on him definitely, or like Guy would just go right to blitz him like right off the bat. So. Uh, and and on, and on, in character, I feel like that would be the smart thing to do. Like I feel like that'd be Kakashi's kind of like way of thinking. Like, okay, we need to make sure that no summons get put on the field, otherwise we are screwed. So yeah. Uh, and I'd, I'd say Pain has another problem in this fight here because usually Pain fights in formations that are pretty tight and mm -hmm. compact, and like if Kakashi sees that. He's gonna make sure that um, Pain spends his Shura Tensei, mm -hmm. and while he's on cooldown, he's gonna tell Guy to do the Hero Dora, and he can maybe one shot the entire Pain paths, like uh, because as I said before, the Pains don't have the greatest durability in the world. The, the Diva Path got defeated by a Rasengan, and the Hero Dora has a massive radius. <laughs> well, I think there's I was a chance say, of him it getting was, one shot. <laughs> I was gonna say it has about like, as much as like. As much range as the Ross and Shuriken wants it expands, if not more. So oh yeah, it has way more. Like yeah. if you, if you look at the blast of the Hero Door, the first time he, guy uses against Kisame, it's bigger than the Turtle Island. Yeah, it's pretty insane. It's like a, a large scale Bijudama. So uh, the only thing I can see Pain doing against it is Shinra Tensei. And if if Kakashi knows he has a cooldown, he's gonna make sure he is on cooldown before a guy uses it, and it's gonna be very troublesome. The only thing I can see being problematic for Guy and Kakashi is gonna be Chibako Tensei, really. But then Guy can also shoot uh, Hirodora at the orb, or Kakashi can just come it away. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So like, and and honestly, like as a as a conversation like ender for this one, like like do we saw how close Kakashi was to beating the Diva Path with just help from a, a little bit of help from Choji and Choza but now if you put Guy into this like their teamwork's going to be even better like they're used to fighting with each other all the time so yeah their synergy is going to be even better and a lot more problematic so I honestly feel like yeah I, I would agree like again I, I hate that we haven't even really talked about Conan a whole lot but like what really can she do like I, I hate dismissing her I really do guys but like against this duo like what she's not gonna if anything she's gonna be like there for moral support <laughs> i mean uh <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you like yeah she can shoot some like attacks from from a range and like her paper attacks are, like you know are do pretty good damage don't get me wrong but i just don't think any of them are really quick enough to hit either one of these two so um yeah uh i think pain and conan lose here uh, if i had to get a, a you know win ratio i do think it's just as tough as kisame and itachi um, just because of the sheer numbers that Pain has, and if they are able to get, yeah, the best animals. chance they have is going to be to overwhelm them if Pain gets a lot of summons. And I mean, Conan can help with that as well, shooting you know paper and paper bombs at Kakashi and Guy to distract them further, so that maybe the the paths of Pain can go and overwhelm them. But still, it's not going to be easy to do that. 
No. So I think I give this one to Kakashi and Guy about seven to eight out of ten times. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I still think it's possible for Pain and Conan to get it. If they, like I said, if they get and the summons off, then yeah, I think they they overwhelm them. But if they don't, if they're not quick enough, then yeah, I think Kakashi and Guy win this one. So, um, so now we'll move on to the last duo of the Akatsuki. I'm surprised y'all. I think y'all would be surprised that we even brought this up. Um, but we're gonna do Data over and Toby versus Kakashi and Guy. Um, now, if we use Toby as he was presented when he was with Datara, then he kind of goofs around and doesn't take the fight seriously. Uh, and in that, I still think it's kind of the same thing as the Datara and Sasori fight. Um, if not, like, Toby just kind of, like, fake retreat or fake dies and just retreats. Um, but if we assume that Obito is taking this fight seriously, then it does become a little bit tougher. Um, but the problem is that Kamui, uh, Obito's Kamui, the Obito's battle ender is somewhat rendered useless in this fight. Um, Daigo, you got, you got anything about it? Yeah, Kakashi can pretty much just, if you get sucked into Kamui, just, uh, unsuck you, you know? Yeah. That's, uh, the deal with this. Usually the one-shot ability for Obito's Kamui, and it's not gonna be that useful here, unless Kakashi doesn't figure out that, oh, uh, it's the same ability. Yeah. But he probably would, because he did so in the fight against Obito in the original series. And I guess, like, Obito could try and do other stuff. He has wood style, and he still have the has the phasing ability, which is very difficult to deal with. But Kakashi, he has Kamui that can counter that, as we saw in the war. Like, imagine, for instance, I don't know, Kakashi throws a kunai at Obito... Uh, and then he uses the Kamui thing to to get Ka Obito inside the Kamui dimension. The kunai pierces him while um, Guy is blitzing with Taijutsu. And I guess mm -hmm. there's Data too to help them out. Um, mm -hmm. There will be more of a distraction for Obito to try and capitalize with his phasing ability, I would say. And I honestly think this would be the the most difficult fight for Guy and Kakashi in the entire Akatsuki duos because yeah. of Obito, really. Yeah. Um, because he can react to Guy. Uh, yes, he w he had the Renegon in the Wark, but he even states when Guy was trying to attack him with Taijutsu that his Sharingan allowed him to read Guy's movements specifically, the Sharingan, not the Renegon. Yeah. So maybe um, the Renegon helps him out way more than the Ren the, the Sharingan helps him out than more than the Sharingan in, the in this situation. And like, I don't know, man. The problem is just how are they going to deal the finishing blow? I guess there's data to try and deal the final explosion and, and kill Guy and Kakashi. So I think this fight's actually pretty evenly matched, to be honest. Yeah, and if you want, like, in canon, like, let's be honest here, like, and I'm being genuine, like, for real when I say this, but if Obito wanted to go the psychological warfare route on Kakashi and Guy, he might just take his mask off, be like, hey, no, I'm alive because we saw that like once like they saw that it was Obito underneath the mask like Kakashi was in a fit of like denial yeah. like, he was just not all there and they let them open for like a lot of attacks on Obito's part so like in all honesty like I'm being genuine when I say this like Obito if he really wanted to he could just pull some psychological warfare on Kakashi and Guy and leave them shocked and, and leave them in shocked enough time for to create an opening and kill them I mean that could be a yeah, definite and, and possibility and the advantage for Obito here is going to be time, because Kamui can last for him, like, pretty much forever. Yeah. He, he does have the five minutes uh, time limit that he can stay phasing, but that's not, like, the entire limit for, for the day. Like, he can yeah. phase more than five minutes, he just has to uh, take some breaks between those, those, those phasings. And... Guy, sure, he can last a long time with the gates in the war, but I don't think he can last as long as Obito can face. And Kakashi, he does have way more chakra in the war as well, but he doesn't have as much chakra as Obito does, so I think he could try to run them out of chakra and then go in for the kill that way. Yeah, so honestly, I, I do think that Obito kind of backpacks this fight, um, but I'd still... I, 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 would probably, I don't know. I think I would give this one to Data and Obito because Data is still there and does kind of provide some distractions and for Obito to kind of capitalize on. And again, if we're doing this anytime before Obito is unmasked and like before like 
you know, Kakashi's kind of gotten over his uh, distraught from it. Uh, that he could, like, you know, pull some psychological warfare on them and maybe capitalize mm -hmm. on it. Um, but I'd say it's a 50 50, honestly. I think I'd go 50 50 on this one, to be perfectly. I, don't I, think I think I would I would give this one to Vito and Dater. I'd say they, they win seven out of 10, probably. I could, I could almost agree with that. On it. I just feel like mm. I'm going to stick with 50 50, but I could definitely see a case for uh, Obito and Dater are pulling the win more often than not. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the. The, the eternal do the eternal rivals and the akatsuki more or less you know with the only yeah. possible survive only possible survivor being the leader of the the akatsuki which is obito um so yeah i mean they win more often than not so they they kind of just save the the leaf village and the, the shinobi world as a whole kind of thing you know what i'm saying but um thank you daigo for being on the channel again thanks for having me Make sure y'all go and subscribe to him if y'all haven't already. And thank y'all for watching all the, the video all the way to the end if you have. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, until my next one, like to know, out. Yeah.